Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Let's spend a few moments contemplating the words of Psalm 10 as we spend these moments with our Good Shepherd. I'd like to entitle Psalm 10 as a Christmas psalm. Now, I know November has barely started, so why in the world am I talking about Christmas? Well, be honest. Haven't you started thinking about Christmas at least? Maybe you've already started placing some orders and packages have been coming to the house that you've squirreled away to wrap another day. And I think most of us are trying to figure out what we are even going to do for the Christmas holidays if the COVID-19 lockdowns continue. Well, at any rate, let's, let, here we go. At first glance, Psalm 10 doesn't sound much like a Christmas psalm. It talks about evildoers, and these evildoers and their wickedness seem to be getting away with what they want, and they imply that God doesn't see them, or God doesn't even care. And in fact, the psalmist himself is starting to think that way too. He's asking, where is God? Why isn't he intervening? And I think there are times, aren't there, when we feel the same way. Where is God? Why isn't he intervening? And so the psalmist cries out, Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand, forget not the afflicted. And that's exactly what happened at Christmas, isn't it? God rose up. He lifted up his hands. The Son of God came down and was born a baby in a manger in Bethlehem. God didn't forget the afflicted. God became one of the afflicted. And so Jesus was raised up on a cross, afflicted stricken, smitten, and afflicted for those of us who are afflicted. He died for those of us who are dying. But then he rose from the dead so that we might be rising with him. And that's good for us to know. That gives us hope. But what about the afflictions we're now suffering, the trials we're now dealing with? Well, God reminds us he keeps his promises to us, just as he kept the promise to send his son Jesus, and just as he kept his promise that Jesus would die and rise again, God says, I'll keep my promises to you. Don't be afraid. Now, God's timing may be different, and God's answers may not be the ones we expect, but in the end, God's ways are always best. And so we can then say with the psalmist at the end that, of the psalm that God's goodness and greatness is greater than the evil in this world, and he acts for us. And so maybe your Christmas won't be as merry as you would have liked, but it is still more blessed than you can even imagine. We pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for rising up from heaven and coming down to me as the babe of Bethlehem, only to rise up again for me on the cross and then to go down into the grave. But again, you rose up out of that grave to declare your victory and my salvation. Help me to trust your word, knowing that you provide for me and will see me safely to the life that has no end. Amen. And now, even though it might be a month early, have a very Merry Christmas each and every day in your Savior Jesus.